اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إنه خير ناصر ومعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد ما صل على محمد تب القلوب ودوائها ونور أبصارها وعلى أهل بيته الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا صل على محمد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم تنزيله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك لآيات لكوم يتفكرون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات ما صلي على محمد فضل الله فأبا عبد الله الوسين ودى الله دي صفا فيس صلوا على محمد وآل محمد ما صلي على محمد فضل الله في ما مصائب العصر والزمان أرواحنا له الفداء صلوا على محمد وآل محمد ما صلي على محمد Once again, we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gracing us and granting us this wonderful moment, wonderful opportunity, this afternoon of Friday to witness the marriage ceremony between our brother, brother Murtada, and our sister, sister Fatima. Inshallah, in this short space of time, we're going to discuss a very important topic which is, of course, in relation to the meaning of why we are all here. My topic of discussion for this afternoon is to look at factors that strengthen our marital relationship. In other words, if those factors are found in each and every relationship, that relationship will be as if it is contracted at the same time. And how are we going to discuss it? We're going to look at it from two dimensions. First stage, we're going to look at the philosophy of marriage in Islam. What are the reasons for marriage according to the teachings of Islam? From Quran and from the teachings of our beloved prophets. And then we will conclude by looking at those factors that will help us to achieve those philosophies and to achieve those aims and objectives of marriage. And the verse I've just quoted is a very known verse, I'm sure, to most of us. Especially those of us who have attended most of my lectures. And Alhamdulillah, our brother just now, he recited that verse during his recitation. It is from chapter Rome, verse 21. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنَ خَلَكَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this particular verse of glorious Quran is sensitizing each and every one of us on one of the major philosophy and the reason of marriage. Therefore I say first examination we look at the reasons why are we getting married? Not only for Brother Murtada or for Sister Fatima, all of us here who are married, we need to understand and review the reasons why we are in marriage. Whether Muslims, Christians, Jewish, non-Muslims, at the end of the day, we all get married. And why are we getting married? Number one, because marriage is a natural phenomenon. Natural phenomena in the sense that when you go back to Quran, you'll see Allah Taala saying, وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَكْنَ الزَّوْجَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah says, in each and everything, those things you see, and those things that you are unable to see, we created all in purse. There is nothing that is created by Allah and they are not in purse. Whatever you see, whether even in inanimate objects, they are all in purse. Because if things are not in purse, then the rest are sure there will be no life. So marriage is a natural phenomenon. You go to the world of animals, 
there is marriage there. You go to the world of plants and flowers, there is marriage there. When the male and the female meet, then another flower will grow and will come out. The same thing when you come to our world as human beings, homo sapiens, there is marriage also in our world. And therefore, let us look at why marriage. Why Brother Murtaza is getting married this afternoon? Why Sister Fatima is getting married? Why are you married? Once we are able to identify those philosophies and the reasons for marriage, then we will strive as much as we can to achieve those aims and objectives. And these reasons is not only to religious people. It has nothing to do with religion. Therefore, I said it is a natural phenomenon. So if it's a natural phenomena, the reason is also natural. It's not religious. Although, when you go to scriptures, scriptures confirm it. The first reason and philosophy, why I and you are married, or we getting married, and you need to ask yourself, I've been married for the past 20 years. I've been married for the past 15 years. I've been married for the past 30 years. Am I able to achieve those philosophies or not? If you realize that in your marriages, those philosophies are not there, it means you have a long way to go in your marriage. And if you have achieved some of them and some are not yet achieved, then you need to work hard to be able to achieve them. The first philosophy is found in this verse which I've just quoted. Allah said, Women ayatihi. Marriage is a platform, it's a channel of knowing Almighty God. You know, there are two ways of knowing God. One way is the inner way, and the other way is outer way. What is inner way? Everybody's got it. Only what you need to do, you need to activate it. Once you activate it within yourself, you will be able to know God. You don't need someone to sit here and tell you about God. Inner way is what? You have to listen to your instincts. Once you are able to listen to your instincts, and you are able to pay maximum attention to your instincts, you will realize that your instinct advises you. And what is the advice of your instinct? The advice will be that there is a being who is greater than any other thing, and that being deserved to be worshipped. So when you look at this verse, Allah is telling unto you, marriage is to know God. Outer way, inner way. And Imam Amir al muminin was asked, which of the two ways is the quickest way to know God? Imam Ali said, the inner way is the quickest way to know God. What is the inner way? Within yourself. When you check Quran, God Almighty in 13 verses of Quran, he mentioned among my signs, among my signs, among my signs, 13. Why? Because Allah, God Almighty wants you to know him. He wants you to understand this existence. And this verse that I've just quoted, the Rome, in this verse, seven of those verses are found in this chapter. And six of those verses are following one another. Twenty-one you go. And the last one is verse 46 of this chapter, Rome. Three of them in chapter Rome is talking about knowing God through yourself. And three of them is talking about knowing God outside yourself and the other one is talking about the both yani mushtarak knowing god through yourself and knowing god outside yourself marriage is one of the examples of knowing god through yourself therefore god almighty says women ayatihi one of his signs and khalaka lakum min anfusikum azwaja that he created from you your mates but as we all know islamically we do not believe that god created hawa from the rib of adam no adam and hawa are created from one single soul but when God says in this verse, Mena anfusikum azwaja, from yourself, he created a mate from you. God is not saying, Awa is created from the... No, 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 no. He's saying about the nature of marriage. That through this marriage, one is able to go back to him or herself. And once you are able to go back to yourself, you get to know God. Now question. We are Christians, we are Jewish, we are Muslims, we are Hindus. 
We've been married for many years. Is our marriage helping us to know God? The best way to know God is through marriage. So therefore, the first philosophy of marriage is knowing God Almighty. If my knowledge about God is so weak, the moment I get married, it has to go to the next level. If my devotion to my religion is not the way it's supposed to be, the moment I get married, it has to take me to the next level. That is number one. Number two, why are we married? Al-Hudu wa Sakina. We are married to obtain tranquility, peace, and harmony. We are married to create a conducive atmosphere in our houses and in our communities, at our mosque, at our synagogue, at our temples. The reason why this family is getting married to that family is to bring peace and tranquility within the communities. Therefore, God Almighty, in the same verse, Rome 21, he said, Let us kunu ileha, so that you may dwell in them. To dwell in one another means to obtain peace and tranquility. So therefore, the second philosophy of marriage is that I need peace. I don't want problems. I don't want chaos. So therefore, while you are in marriage, and your marriage is done properly, and you get into it in the best possible way, no doubt your marriage will help you to obtain peace, tranquility. That's number two. Number three, why are we getting married? All of us here. It's to get good offspring. I mentioned it last night. It's to get good children. It's to get good members in our communities. It's to get good members in our society. It's to get the best form of citizenship. It's to get the best people. Therefore, when you get married, the third philosophy is that I want to give Kenya the best product that can serve Kenya in the best possible way. I am getting married because this is my community. I want to give this community one of the best child that can serve this community with unconditional situation, without any condition, unconditionally. When I get married... Because I want to produce a child to this community, that child will go out in his own way to sacrifice for the betterment of this community. Therefore, our Prophet said, Good child is one of the bundles of heaven and paradise. That's the reason why we are married. If I do not get that in my marriage, then there's something wrong in my marriage. So therefore, Brother Murtaza and Sister Fatima, these are the main philosophies. Let's go to the fourth and fifth one, then we trim our discussion because of time and Maghrib. Now, the fourth philosophy of marriage is that wife is beauty for the husband or beautiful and the husband is also beauty for her. What do I mean? People see your wife in you and see your husband in you. When I see you, Brother Murtaza, I see Fatima. When I look at your akhlaq, I see Fatima. When I look at Fatima, I see you. You have become a zina for her, she become a zina for you. Beauty for your wife, beauty for your husband. Whether I'm there or not, so long as she's there, I'm 100% represented in a possible, in a positive way. Therefore, what does Quran says? Hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lakum. You are clothed for them and they are clothing for you. What is the meaning of cloth? There are three possible meanings for cloth. Of course, when you go to Quran again, Allah mentioned, Here we get the first meaning of cloth. means dress, beautiful dress. Your wife, you know the way you are dressed today? Because you are waiting to say Kabil too, isn't it? Ah, that's why you are dressed nicely. Now, your wife, the way you are dressed when I see you, I respect you. Because there is dignity in dress also, no doubt about it. When you dress nicely, there is dignity in it. You know, there is a, a guy called Juha, Sheikh Juha. I'm sure you heard about him. You know, Juha, he went to a great ceremony 
but he was not dressed properly. So nobody was worried to give him a place to sit. <laughs> he tried everything. There was no one to give him a place to sit. Okay, then he went back. He dressed nicely, properly. To such an extent, some of them did not recognize he was the, person, the first person who came. So he came back. Allahu Akbar. The ashari was state of the art. They ushered him nicely. They gave him a nice place. He went and sat. Now all varieties of food were coming. Oh, Allah. You know what he did? He started taking the food and smearing on the body, on the clothes. <laughs> they said, ah. He said, no, but you are worshipping the clothes, so I'm giving the food to the clothes to eat, not me. <laughs> so you dress properly. There is dignity in dress, no doubt. So the first meaning of libas is that you look smart. So that should go beyond the dress. I should see your wife. When I see her, I see that beauty. Number two meaning is that she is sitter for you and you are sitter for her. You are a protection for her. And she's a protection for you. She covers you, you cover her. If you are wrong, she doesn't expose your wrong out there. If she is wrong, you do not dare expose it out there. That is the meaning of you are beauty for her, she is beauty for you. The third possible meaning of why Allah says and Islam says you are beauty for her and she is beauty for you. She blocks you in indulging into any wrongs. Once you are married, you cannot afford to commit mistakes. Whether between you and God or between you and people, the aim of marriage is for your wife to stop you from doing that. So when Islam says you are beauty for her, she's beauty for you, it means Murtaza from today, you will not be seen committing any error. Likewise, Fatima. You can see the view of Islam about marriage. Profound. Beyond our thinking. And the last one as to why we get married is that a woman is a source of happiness and a man is a source of happiness. Once I'm married, I and sadness is over. That is the philosophy which Islam put for us. Now, how do we achieve this philosophy? Very, very important. These are the factors to strengthen our marital relationships. Because we need to strive to make sure we achieve these aims and objectives. Because once I'm married and I'm unable to achieve them, then I'm not benefiting from my marriage. There are so many, but I'm going to leave it to two or three of them. The first one is a takdeer wa shukr. It's thanksgiving and being grateful. A woman should be grateful to her husband. And a husband should be grateful to his wife. Is it happening in our marriage that now and then we look at each other and say, thank you, my wife. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Husband, do you do that? Woman, do you do that? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. May God bless you. First factor to strengthen our marriage to make it as if the day you tied the knot is to appreciate one another now and then. Look at our Lord, God Almighty. One of his titles in Quran is Shakur. Wallahu ghafurun shakur. Allah is oft forgiving and is forever grateful. God. If our Lord is forever grateful, how come in our marriages we do not appreciate one another? One small problem, we complain, we shout. First factor is to appreciate one another. Isn't it Quran said, Wala fadla You may have problems, but don't forget the goodness between you and her. You may have a lot of problems, but don't forget the good days. Appreciate your wife. Appreciate your husband. Sincerely show gratitude to one another. 
And Allah, how does he show gratitude to us? Whenever you go according to the law of nature, God appreciates you. When I appreciate you, how does he demonstrate it? He increases your earning in life. And he increases a lot of bounties and benedictions in your life. This is how Almighty appreciate us. Therefore, you see Quran, our brother just recited, Hal jazaul ihsan illa al ihsan. The reward of goodness is goodness. She agreed to marry you. You agreed to marry her. That is goodness. The person who says, I love you. I am ready to sit for people to witness our marriage. That person loves you indeed. So Quran said, The reward of goodness is goodness. You have to appreciate. And if you go to Islamic history, you may have a lot of examples. One example is our own beloved Prophet Muhammad. And his wife Khadija. Prophet, peace be upon him. He used to show a lot of appreciation and gratitude for what Khadija did. To such an extent, he never forgot even after the death of Khadija. After her death, Prophet would repeatedly say, I cannot thank Khadija enough. I cannot pray for Khadija enough. Because she supported me when no one else was ready to support me. Because Khadija gave me all her wealth entirely when no one was ready to give me his wealth. And she believed in me when no one else was ready to believe in me. So therefore, number one, brothers and sisters, let us appreciate our wives and husbands. Therefore, you find the Quran said, one of the nature of insan, human being, is that when you are in trouble, when you are in dire state of in need of something, you humble yourself. But the moment you get it, you forget. When he is afflicted with problems, oh, you will see him humble humility. But the moment that problem is solved, he forgets. So sometimes we also forget. When we get married, everything is okay, alhamdulillah. But during tough times, we tend to forget one another. So that is number one, we should not forget. Number two in marriage, this is also a very important point. Whatever we do in our marriage, we should be do in between. What is in between? Not extreme and not below standard also. What does it mean? Not extreme, not below standard. You know today some people when they get married, the love they will have for their wives will make them even to forget father and mother anymore. That is extreme. No matter how you love your wife or you love your husband, you cannot forget your parents. Once you forget them, we have people like that. To such an extent, there are men. When they get angry at their wives, they attack the personalities of their in-laws. Rasulullah, Prophet Muhammad mentioned, Do not insult the dead ones. Because doing that will harm those who are alive. Hope if Islam said don't insult the dead ones, what of those who are alive? Some people, when they get there, they attack the personality of their in-laws. So don't do the extreme. The same thing also, don't do below. What is below? I'm still attached to my mother. I'm still mommy's boy. So even when you have to go for safari, your mother has to tell you when to take your wife for safari. That is below. Which food do we eat today? Okay, let him ask mom. That is below. You have to create a balance. Not extreme, you cannot ignore them, and you cannot go down also. It's a very important factor. That their parents, they want to interfere in each, you don't interfere, you monitor. To monitor is highly recommended in Islam, like the way our own beloved prophet used to monitor Fatima and Imam Amir al-Mu'mini. He would come and ask Fatima, how is your husband? Since he said, the best of the man. 
monetary no problem but you cannot interfere and tell them do this go to this safari don't do that that is number two which is also very very important number three we need to accept advices from one another give advice to your husband give advice to your wife and when that advice is given whether good or bad accept it some of us are too arrogant we don't want even our wife to talk to us but accepting advice from one another is the best way to strengthen your marital relationship when you see wrong in your husband communicate this is what they said communication sit with him talk to him when you see wrong in your wife sit with her talk to her don't shout don't raise your voice because imam al-hassan al-hussein taught us in a nice way on how to advise someone who is wrong isn't it we are told they saw a man making wudu and the wudu is wrong completely so imam hassan and hussein said okay now let's tell this man to watch us each and every one of us is going to make wudu to tell us who is right and who is wrong then imam hassan started making the wudu then the man said no 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 you are right me i'm wrong this is how you are you don't go directly so communication in our marriages is so important and it goes a long way in helping us strengthen our marital relationship and last but not least which help a lot in our marital relationship don't expect miracle from one another woman cannot make miracle man cannot make miracle some of us we expect miracle from our wives and some of us we expect miracle from our husbands there shouldn't be takalluf not taklif taklif different from takalluf takalluf means burden i give you burden she cannot bear it but i'm still giving her we don't do that in marriages once you do that the marriage will not be a successful marriage so therefore my advice for this afternoon brothers and sisters if we want our marriage to be a successful marriage because marriage is a social institution that is where our leaders are groomed that is where our children are brought up that is where the society is made i told you last night problems you see in all communities you want to solve it to go to marriages that's the best way to solve every problem i promise you you can try billions of meetings hundreds of meetings it will reduce kidogo but it will not solve the entire problem if you want to solve the problem these are the new generations murtaza fatima who are getting married we need to be more particular about them to make sure they get into the marriage properly so that there will be no problems once that area is fixed i promise you there will be no problem therefore quran sometimes it tempted to this as i mentioned libas cloth sometimes it tempted to it as a comfort of the eye and the apple of the eye and sometimes quran tempted to it as a source of the ultimate happiness once we are able to do that then inshallah god almighty will help us and we will be able to achieve our aim goals and objectives you ask allah tabarak wa ta'ala to help our brother brother murtaza and sister fatima who are yet to contract the marriage to lead and to become role models for those who are thinking of getting married in the near future inshallah wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi at-tahirin